This is Healing Your Soul with Katie Souza. Real keys to the miraculous. What's weighing you down, holding you back? What has wounded your soul? Today with Katie, discover the healing power of God for your life. Katie was once broken, oppressed, in bondage to a life of mental and physical pain until God gave her a new life and powerful messages of how you can heal your wounded soul. Now, here is Katie to begin today's program. Hi, this is Katie Souza. Welcome to Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Last week, we talked about getting wrapped up in the drama of your trauma. It's bad enough that we all have to go through all kinds of extreme circumstances in our life. It's unfair and it's difficult, but let me encourage you. If we do our best to put our focus on Jesus healing us of every painful thing that came with that situation, He's going to come to our rescue. When we got into our accident, I started to let myself get pulled into all the drama that was involved with the situation. But once I changed my focus and instead believed that God could do a miracle for me, then I got just what I was believing for. God supernaturally healed my body and my wounded soul. Now, right now, many of you need an extreme miracle. You might be stuck in the mindset that you've lived with this injury, condition, or heartache for years, so you think you'll always have to live with it. But that's not true. I know because I've seen countless people healed in their physical bodies of injuries they've had for decades. And it happened when they got their souls healed of the trauma. Throughout all these programs, you've heard me teach about a power called dunamis that comes to us through the resurrection of Jesus. Today, you're going to hear about how this power caused my physical body to be healed of the effects of my accident. Remember, the word dunamis means excellence of soul, and it also means the power to perform a miracle. So the same power that's going to heal your soul of the wounds that came from trauma is also the same power that can heal your physical body of any injury. Are you ready for your breakthrough? Good, because it's coming now. Amy Dawson and I were on tour. Amy's my videographer. We went to Tennessee for a meeting. We had a conference there. Our driver, Gary Beaton, picked us up in his car. We got in, Amy got in the passenger side in the front, I got in the, in the back behind her, and we belted in. We took off down the highway. So we were traveling down the highway by highway speed. We'd been in the car less than three minutes, I think, when suddenly we were alongside another car that turned off. And the guy that was jumping out of a driveway, a parking lot, did not see us because we were alongside that car. And he jumped out in front of us while we were doing 60 miles an hour. The impact was so violent that I immediately developed what's called a hemothorax. A hemothorax is when you start internally bleeding inside your chest wall. And my chest wall started filling up with blood. And what that does is it compacts your lungs so that you can't breathe. And simultaneously, my lungs were filling up with fluid. So that made it, it makes it feel like you're drowning and uh, somebody's choking you at the same time. And I got two broken ribs. We get to the hospital, and now I'm in, I'm in bad shape. The, the blood has filled up so much from the, from the internal bleeding that it's almost cut off every bit of the tiny air I'm getting. And I'm like, in the hallway, I'm in severe respiratory uh, an emergency. And they call for a surgeon to come to the OR. They roll me into the OR, and I'm serious. As soon as I rolled through the doors, the door shut behind me. All of a sudden, in one instant, in one second, I could go, <gasps> I sucked in a breath, and I could talk, and, all the, and the pain was gone. Later on, they took me for an MRI, and uh, I still had the broken ribs. The blood was still in the chest wall, but mysteriously, the bleeding had just stopped on its own. So anyway, we finally get home, and my husband was there to pick us up, and oh my gosh, I was just so glad to be alive and be home, amen, and already had a miracle. God stopped the eternal bleeding. Amy's leg wasn't broken, but we were still very much hurt and very much in pain. So now, what I caught myself doing, which I want to encourage all of you 
to examine yourself too is, I began to fall into the drama of the trauma. You guys know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you what happens to you when you ride the wave and you get involved in the drama of the trauma. The wound that came from the trauma goes deeper. And it makes it that much harder for you to get healed. You can't fall in the drama of the trauma, man. Amy was doing it too. Every time she talked about the accident, she talked about it like this. Right? It's true. I had to stop her. I'm like, snap out of it. You're doing the drama, the trauma thing. Stop it. I said that to myself. After a week of these doctors every day and the pain pills and the poop and the vomit and all the other stuff, I finally said, stop it. Snap out of it, Kate. You're falling in the drama, the trauma. Because I was in really pain, but my own attitude, my own soul connection to the accident and the pain was making it worse. And I was like, you know what? That's it. I am not going to do this. I went back to the doctor and I said, look, don't give me no more pain pills. I don't want those things no more. Now, look, I'm not preaching a message that you can't have a pain pill. So don't write me an email, okay? I'm just saying for me, it didn't work. And for me, you got to get healed in your soul for stuff like that to even give you some help. Okay? So I cut off the pain pills. And now I'm in really big pain. It's like after you say, I don't want those pain pills. And you go, oh, rats. Did I say that? Mm." Check my pulse. Am I all right? Yeah. You know, it was really bad. And so I was in real pain after that because my ribs were still broken. And I had lacerations all over my body. And so I was like, God, you know what? I can't do this. I've got, you know, meetings were being canceled. I I was supposed to go into a prison event. I was like, God, I can't miss a prison event. I was supposed to go to Brazil. I had all this stuff. And I was like, I can't, this can't happen. I said, I need another miracle. I see thousands of miracles. I've already had one. You stop my internal bleeding. I'm going to bleed for another one. You're going to heal my ribs. Take this pain away. So I remember I called all the peeps together. I called the generals together and all my intercessory team. And they came over the house. And Sion, who's online now, I think, from London, is she still there? Yep. She was online too. And I said, come on, we're just going to soak my soul of this trauma. And get rid of it. And the same power dunamis that makes your soul healed, makes you excellent soul, what does it also do? What is, it, what is one of the meanings of dunamis? The power to perform a miracle. I was believing that same power that would heal me, the wounds that came from the trauma, would also, could also heal my ribs. Would also give me creative power to heal my ribs. So we sat there and we soaked and we prayed. And it was like a, about an hour or so. And at the end of the soak, Sion from London, she was on the Skype and she said, I saw a vision. I saw a vision of a waterfall pouring over your ribs and a rainbow. And I said, oh, that's great. That's great. Waterfall, cleansing, rainbow of promise. That's awesome. Now, I didn't feel anything at that moment. I was in agony at that moment, as a matter of fact. I'm like, okay, I don't feel it, but I receive it. Amen. And then the rest of the night went on, and I was in such pain. I went to bed. I laid there in bed. I couldn't even get comfortable. I couldn't move. I couldn't get to sleep. My husband came. I couldn't sit up by myself. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't do anything. I'm like, help me, help me. Rub my feet. Do something. I'm in agony. Help me. So he did as best as he could. And I finally went to sleep. And when I did, I had a dream. I had a dream that a woman came into my room, and she was painting the wall. And all night long, it was the same dream over and over again. Painting, 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 painting the wall in front of me in my bedroom. Painting, 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 painting. And I I couldn't make out what the painting was. And then suddenly in the morning, right before I woke up, it all came into focus. She had painted a huge picture of a waterfall. Seconds later, I woke up, and all the pain, just in my ribs, not the rest of my body, but in my ribs, was completely gone. (laughs) And I knew I had a miracle. So, of course, I wanted to have proof. So I went to the doctor and asked him to give me another x-ray. Now, I had just had two MRIs, separate independent ones, 14 days earlier. This happened on the, on the 14th day. And they thought I was crazy. You don't need an MRI. You don't need another x-ray. Ribs don't heal in 14 days. There's no way. It takes eight weeks for ribs to heal. And I'm like, look, I've had a miracle. Give me the x-ray. So I went and got the x-ray. And I had to switch doctors because the first doctor was so far away, so hard to get there. So I was walking to the new doctor. Well, he hadn't received the old files from the other doctor that we'd been going to for a week yet. So he hadn't seen the two MRIs with the broken ribs and all that. But I had the new x-rays in my hand. 
So I walked in this doctor who doesn't believe. <laughs> I walked in and I handed him the, the envelope and he take, I said, are my ribs broken? And he took out the first x-ray and he looked at it and he looks at it. And he takes out the next x-ray and he looks at it. He takes out the third x-ray and he looks at it and he goes, who told you your ribs are broken? And I'm like, my ribs are broken. I, I got two independent MRIs that say my ribs are broken from 14 days ago. I was in an accident. He goes, what? Who told you your ribs are broken? I had to tell him the whole story. He didn't believe me. He thought I was lying. He says, because there's absolutely no sign on here that your ribs were ever broken. Yeah. I'm told that when you break a bone, you can always see that bone. But there's no sign that my ribs were ever broken. Amen. When I was first sentenced to 13 years, I thought, oh no, I'm going to be here forever. But as the years passed, I realized that God had me there for a reason, not just as punishment for my crimes, but to be changed, healed, and empowered. And now I'm taking everything God taught me and I'm using it to heal hurting people all around the world. We teach inmates that they have a future and that they can change the world too. If I could do it, they can do it and you can help. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of a change. Call now. And when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of Made Perfect in Weakness, three disc set. With your gift of $35 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Call toll free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of Made Perfect in Weakness. Are you still suffering today from an accident or injury that happened years ago? Are you still in emotional or physical pain from a traumatic situation? And this CD set, Made Perfect in Weakness, I show you how to get healed of the mental, emotional, and physical pain that comes from trauma. I've also included 60 minutes of prayers that I personally lead you through that will bring major breakthrough. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-789. 7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. But let me just finish and then we're going to activate. Amen. I really know, I really feel I know why that I got two miracles so easily. It was so easy. Within two weeks, I got a miracle that saved my life and then a miracle that he healed my ribs. And I really feel like I understand the dynamics of one of the reasons why. First of all, there was a lot of people praying for us. As soon as we got into the accident, the call went out, and within an hour, you know, hundreds of people were praying for us. Pastor Russ and all his people were at the hospital praying for us, so I know the power of prayer, amen? The power of prayer works. But I know the other reason why. It's because when that accident healed, I had already spent years getting my soul healed of all the trauma I've been through in my life. My soul was already clean from trauma. So there was no place for a new trauma to have a foothold in my soul. Listen, I've lived through some traumas. I don't know if you all know my story, but I was on the streets for years. I was a dope addict. I was a meth cook. I was a collector. I did collections for a living, meaning I went and kicked people's doors down. I held guns to people's heads and took their money and their possessions. I lived a very, very violent existence, and I had a lot of violent things happen to me. I can remember once a biker club took a 1963 Chevy pickup of mine and would not give it back, and I was very angry. It's like they thought they could do it because I was a girl. Oh, I was going to show them, all right? And I started to tax this biker club. Me, myself, and I going after a biker club. I must have been high, okay? <laughs> and they decided I was so much trouble that they were just going to kill me. So they actually called me up one day and says, oh, hey, you know, we cut your truck up already. But if you come by the shop, we'll give you a bunch of stuff to make up for it. And I was like, all right. So I show up at this huge shop all by myself, with just me, myself, and I. And first they tried to give me what's called a hot shot of dope. It's dope that's laced with strychnine. They offered it to me. And, I, and I, they left the room. They said, go ahead, do it. Mix up a shot because I used to inject my dope. And they left the room. Well, for one, bikers are one percenters. They would never let you inject on their property. They don't inject dope. They do not use needles. So I'm like, mm, yeah, right. So I stick my finger in the spoon and taste the dope, and I could taste the rat poison in it. So I'm like, Hish. threw it out, took out my own sack, made up my own hit, and did it. I walk out the office a few minutes later, and they're like, 
waiting for me to drop dead. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, didn't, nothing happened. So they had to do something else. So what they did was they went outside while I was getting the tour from the president. Oh, you can have that basket case Harley and that Ford pickup and that blah, blah, blah. His henchmen were outside taking the master link off the motorcycle, the stolen motorcycle I rode in on. I don't know if you know anything about that. But when you take the master link off, the chain can stay connected. You get on the bike, drive off. As soon as you punch it, it'll snap the chain apart. And, it'll, and, and you'll wreck. And that's what happened. I went outside. I got on the bike, turned the corner, punched it. I was doing maybe 40, 50 miles an hour, probably 50. And the chain snapped and wrapped around the back tire. And I T-boned a curb head on. Flipped the bike up. The back end went pop up in the air. Flipped over three times. Had a major concussion, skinned all the skin off my hands and my hip, looked like shredded meat, broke my collarbone. I still to this day, I have a raised up bone here because I never went to the hospital afterwards because you don't do that when you have a stolen bike and a bunch of dope. <laughs> and the guy was sitting there from the hotel security parking lot, came out with his walkie talkie. Well, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Let me call the police for you. And I'm like, yeah, no thanks. Thanks anyway. <laughs> I'm getting up, I'm trying to pick up the bike, and I can't, because my, my arm is broken. I don't realize it, because I've got a major head concussion. I'm trying to get the butt pack off the back of the bike and get away before the police come. I'm walking away. He's like, I'm calling the ambulance. Don't go. I'm like, no, they're just going to charge me a bunch of money. Thanks a lot for nothing. I'm just trying to get out of there with a stolen bike. And it's like, I got nowhere to go. And as I get, I'm headed back to the shop with the guys that just tried to kill me. And I'm like, the cops up ahead pull around the corner. It's like, where do I go? The guys in the shop see me coming, so they're trying to shut the big doors before I can get in, and I jump up, and I jump through the doors right as they slam behind me. <gasps> Out of the fire, into the frying pan. <laughs> so I'm back in the shop hiding from the cops with the guys that tried to kill me. And I'm like, the police are outside, so... In other words... Don't try it again. It's probably not good timing to murder me right now. Uh, take me to the back so I can climb over the fence. So they did. I couldn't climb over the fence because of my arm. And then I decided to go hide in the inner sanctuary of their shop, which had a big metal door, and I locked myself behind it, and I hid from the police there all night. I hid underneath the desk as the copter, the police copter came. When they found out the bike was stolen, they were looking for me. And it shined a slide in the windows, and I stayed there and hid from the police and from the guys who were trying to kill me all night. And I had such a concussion on my head that every time I moved, I would spin out of control. I couldn't sit up for like eight hours after I crunched down underneath that desk. I was covered with blood and had a severe concussion. And, and finally in the morning, I, I, I was able to stand up after about two hours of giving it a good shot. I was able to finally get up out of the, underneath the desk. There was a bathroom right there. I went to the bathroom, did another shot of dope, and uh, cleaned myself up made it out of there because I have that kind of anointing and uh, <laughs> and I lived and I'm alive to tell about it but do you think that traumatized my soul well I've been healed of that and when I was in that ambulance going to the hospital with the hemothorax I felt the weight of the revelation the truth of the revelation being active in me that I'd already been healed after all these years of soaking my soul in the presence of the cross and the resurrection. I felt the power of that revelation because when I was in the ambulance, out here in, the, in, in my body, I'm doing this. I look like I am going to die and I'm a mess. But in here, while I was in the ambulance, all of a sudden, I recognized something that it was well with my soul. My soul wasn't going... My soul was deep like a still lake, and it was calm and peaceful. Because I'd been healed of past traumas. And what happened? 20 minutes later, God miraculously stopped me to stop the internal bleeding and save my life. I really believe. <clears throat> yes. When you're healed of past traumas, when a new trauma comes, it can't get a foothold in your soul. And you can expect a miracle to happen very quickly. So you need to start getting healed of all those past traumas now because then you're going to get healed of the physical stuff and the mental stuff and everything else that's come from that trauma. 
You'll prosper in your finances even as your soul is prospered. I don't say that lightly. People are waiting for settlements right now that came from accidents, and they're not getting them. Why? Because there's a wound in their soul that's stopping the blessing from coming. You will prosper even as your soul prospers. You got to get healed. And then you'll start to see all the afflictions fall off. And then if anything else happens to you in the future, you're, you are primed for a miracle. And I received two miracles right in a row, and I really believe it's because my soul has had so much healing. Amen? Okay, so let's move into it ourselves right now, okay? We're going to pray, and we're going to do the two steps I talked about earlier. But I want to start by asking the Holy Spirit to come and do what Holy Spirit does. I wanted him to remind you of any sin that you might have had involved in your trauma. You know, there was sin involved in my past traumas when I got healed of those traumas. It was like three years ago when I got healed of that motorcycle accident. I had to start with the blood. I had to repent because I was involved in major sin. I was doing dope deals with these guys. I was working with this club. I was in sin. I had to repent for that. That's what got me in that, in that whole environment in the first place. It was my own sin. And I had to forgive. Those guys tried to kill me, murder me. I had to forgive them. So we have to start with the blood, Amen. Because there might be some sin that's involved in your trauma. Maybe you're just mad at the ambulance company. You know, maybe you're mad at the guy that said, ma'am, ma'am, stop kicking, stop fighting, and was cutting off your oxygen and didn't even know it. All right? But let's have Holy Spirit help us right now to remind us, is there anything that we need to repent for or forgive in our trauma as we go forward to get healed? Amen? So just put your hand on your belly or your heart. And I'm just going to pray for you. Holy Spirit, right now, I says that you would come, Holy Spirit, right now. And you would remind everyone here of any sin that might be involved in their trauma. Maybe they need to repent of something. Maybe they need to forgive someone or even a business, an agency like an insurance company. Whatever that trauma might be, and maybe it's a divorce or loss of a loved one or, or a, you know, loss of a job. Maybe they need to forgive their boss. Maybe they need to repent for being angry at their boss. Whatever that trauma may be, Holy Spirit, please tell them right now by the revelatory power that you bring what sins need to be dealt with first in Jesus' name. Now let's just pray together. Just say, Lord, wash me clean of any sin that's involved in my trauma. I repent for anything I've done that was considered sin I forgive anyone or any business that was associated with my trauma and I ask that you would cleanse me of all sin that could further wound my soul and I repent for getting involved with the drama of the trauma. I break my agreement with that. I am not gonna focus negatively on my trauma. I'm not gonna be consumed by it. I'm gonna get healed of it. I decree it right now in the name of Jesus. Now say amen. I just say, I decree I'm excellent a soul. I'm being filled with dunamis right now. The power is filling my soul and my body. I'm being healed by the power of dunamis. I'm touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And he's healing me in both body and soul. I receive the infilling of the power now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Say, I am excellent of soul. 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 Just a reminder, when you get wounded by trauma, those wounds can go deeper if you let yourself get caught up in the drama of the trauma. 
I know this might be a difficult word to hear, but I encourage you to not let yourself focus on the pain of the situation. Don't let yourself get offended at people or companies that are involved in your traumatic situation. Because if you do, you're just going to wound yourself more and it's going to be harder for you to get healed. Trust me, it's true. You need to put your focus on Jesus doing a miracle for you instead of focusing on the pain that you may be feeling. I believe that many of you have already been healed of trauma during this show. So now I want to pray over you. I command the spirit of trauma to leave you right now in Jesus' name. I break trauma off of your soul. I break trauma off your mind and off your emotions. And I break trauma off of your physical body in the name of Jesus. I command trauma to come off of you now, out of your cells, so that your body would not hold the memory of that trauma in the name of Jesus. Now, be free of pain, guilt, and shame. Be free of agony, anger, and offense. Be free of depression, self-pity, and anxiety. In the name of Jesus, I command your body to be healed of the effects of every single trauma you've endured. Be healed now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, amen. When I was first sentenced to 13 years, I thought, oh no, I'm gonna be here forever. But as the years passed, I realized that God had me there for a reason, not just as punishment for my crimes, but to be changed, healed, and empowered. And now I'm taking everything God taught me and I'm using it to heal hurting people all around the world. We teach inmates that they have a future and that they can change the world too. If I could do it, they can do it, and you can help. Today, with your support, you are giving hope and healing to a life that may be in a desperate need of a change. Call now. And when you do, Katie would like to thank you for your gift by sending you a copy of Made Perfect in Weakness, three disc set. With your gift of $35 or more, you will have a part in putting God's Word directly into the hands of a life that is ready to change. Call toll-free 1-800-789-7895. And as a thank you for your gift, Katie will send you a copy of Made Perfect in Weakness. Are you still suffering today from an accident or injury that happened years ago? Are you still in emotional or physical pain from a traumatic situation? And this CD set, Made Perfect in Weakness, I show you how to get healed of the mental, emotional, and physical pain that comes from trauma. I've also included 60 minutes of prayers that I personally lead you through that will bring major breakthrough. Call now with your gift, 1-800-789-7895. Help Katie reach out to thousands of prisoners with a powerful message of God's ultimate healing power. Next week, we're gonna show you some amazing video testimonies of people who got healed in their physical bodies when they were healed of the wounds in their soul that came from trauma. These testimonies will encourage you and raise your faith up to receive your miracle too. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this program. See you next week.